we're going to talk now about RCU, which is read, copy, update. It's a mechanism that's used for allowing fast reading and occasional updating. Uh, just these videos are based on some work done by MIT OpenCourseWare on RCU and our Creative Commons. All right, so we're going to go back and look at, if you remember back to the homework where we had threads, where we had put and get in a hash table. And if you remember, to begin with, we had putting and getting in the hash table, and there was no locks, and that didn't work right. Because this was each entry in the hash table was a linked list. And then what we did is went for an entire lock for the whole table and found that that worked, but wasn't very quick because that uh, restricted how many concurrent puts we could do. And then we went ahead and had a lock for each bucket. And if you remember, what happened is we used that lock only when we were putting to the linked list, and we didn't need it when we were reading from the linked list. So that's kind of the idea that we're going to be looking at when we're looking at read, copy, update, this idea of how can we avoid having locks for readers for certain kinds of data structures and operations and just require lockers for the, those that modify the data structure so that they don't interact with one another. So let's look at an example with a linked list. So let's say we have our head pointer, and that points to a node. And our nodes are going to contain keys and values. So let's say the key is 2, and the value is 1. Okay. So this is our linked list, and uh, this goes off somewhere else. We don't really care where it's going right now. And we're going to do now an insert at the head of the list. So what's going to happen? So what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and in order to do the insert, first we're going to do a malloc. Okay, so the malloc is going to allocate some space. And clearly at this point, we're not affecting any readers of the linked list. They can still go to the head, read it, get this item, go to the next, get the next, and so on. Okay, so that's safe. We are now going to go ahead and fill in this, uh, initialize all the fields. So let's say key equals 5 value equals 3, and we're going to now set the next pointer of this new node to the first node in the linked list. Again, we're safe at this point, right? Readers will go to head, they'll go through, they'll find the old list. Let's make this a little simpler and let's just say that this uh, is null here. So we've got a length 1 list here as far as any readers see. However, what's going to happen now is the insertion code is going to atomically change the head from the old first node to the new first node. So what happens? The readers are going to always see one of two things. They're either going to see a one item list or they're going to see a two-item list. And this is okay. okay. In fact, if we're clearer, what will happen? So after we have modified head, any new readers that come along will clearly see a two-item list. Any readers that uh, had come along before we change the head are going to see a one-item list. So does that mean that after we change head, all readers are seeing a two-item list? No, because there might be, so let's, let's look at the life cycle kind of of these, right? So we have got, let's say, reader 1 and reader 2 and reader 3. And let's mark, this is the time we change head. Okay, so if we look at reader 3, for example, if it starts reading after we've changed head, it's going to clearly see a two-item list. If we look at reader 1 and it does its reading and stops reading before we change the head, it's going to clearly see a one-item list. Both of these are as we, could, we would expect. Reader 2, on the other hand, if it starts reading before we change the head and, after, and then continues reading after we change the head, it's going to see, in, a, in this particular case, a one-item list. 
right? Because once we change the head and it reads the new head, it's going to see this one. Readers see the one item list and the two item list, and we're going to expect that, that, that that's okay. Let's look at uh, the some phases on this, okay? So our phases are going to be phase one, and this is let's call the original. Phase two is after the malloc. So we've allocated this, but it's empty. Phase three, phase three is we initialize the node, and then phase four is we change the head. As you can see in phase one, phase two, and phase three, all readers are seeing one node, and any readers that start after phase four are seeing two nodes. Instead of inserting, let's look at an example of deleting. All right, so let's say we are deleting this second node. Right? So we've got a mutator that wants to delete the second node. So how is that going to work? Well, phase one is our original. So in our original, if we have a reader, reader C, three, three node list. And now what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and do a deletion. So we're deleting the second element. So we are going to change this pointer. So phase two is we change. What happens when we change the pointer? What do the readers see? Well, it depends. So new readers see a two node list. Old readers, that is readers that are happening in conjunction with this deleter, see either two or three node list. Why two or three? Well, it depends where the reader is. So if we've got a reader here, when this change happens, then when the reader actually reads the next field, it's going to read this. And so it's going to see light as a two node list. On the other hand, uh, if we have a reader who's here, it's going to see things as a three node list because it saw this node, it saw this node, and now it's going to go ahead and follow this um, next field to get to the third. So we can't say. Phase three, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait for existing readers. So after that, what do we see? We see that readers see a two-node list. Why? Because all of the old ones that could have possibly seen three are gone, by definition, because we waited for the existing readers. And in phase four, uh, what are we going to do? Phase four is when once all the existing readers are gone, we know no reader can be looking at this node. And once we know no, no reader can look at the node, we can go ahead and free the old node. We can't free it earlier than that, right? While after we change the pointer, we can't just immediately delete this because there may still be readers that are using this node. So we've got to wait until all those existing readers are gone. Once the existing readers are gone, this node now is gone. But that's okay because there's no one who's looking at it. All of the readers who could have been looking at it were assuming here by waiting for existing readers in some fashion to be discussed, then there aren't any looking at it. So therefore, then we're only seeing a two node list. Once all the old readers uh, have been waited for, of course, then we can go ahead and free. So this is kind of the example, the idea of the read copy update. Readers are doing reading, and mutators or changers are doing copies and, and updates. Let's look at the copy in just a moment. So let's, let's look at the copy in more detail. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to now modify a node. So we're going to modify the key and value of a node. So, in fact, of this node with the old key 7 value 3, we're going to change it to key 17 value 13. In phase 1, which is our original, we are going to see a key equals 7 value plus 1. So what we'll go ahead do and do is allocate a node. So, phase 2, we do a malloc. Readers still see key equals 7 value plus 3. 
Right, they see the other keys and values too, but this is the one that we're going to be changing, so that's the one they care about. Right now, now we're going to do an init. So we are going to go ahead and set the key to 17 and the value to 13. In this particular example we're using, we're changing both of these on purpose. Because if we had to change just one of them, then it would have been possible to change it in place. But the fact that we're changing both of these means there's no way to atomically change both of them. And we would not want to get into a situation where some reader saw a key of 17 and a value of 3, or a key of 7 and a value of 13. Okay, so we're going to go ahead in 3 is the init phase. And again, reader C, sorry, the initialization also includes this pointer. They still see key equals 7 value equals 3. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to go ahead and switch this pointer. So this that we were just doing is the copy. We made a copy of this particular element in the data structure, modified it how we wanted, and now we're doing the update. So this is the init. Now in 4, we could also perhaps think of this whole thing as the copy. Now we're going to update the pointer. So now what do readers see? Right. Well, readers are going to see either key equals 7, value equals 3, that is for those who read this pointer before it got updated, or key equals 17, value equals 13. Okay. For those who have had yet to have read the next pointer of this first command. All right, in the next phase, phase five, what are we going to do? We're going to wait for uh, readers. And I don't mean wait for all readers. I may wait for readers active at step four, at the time we did the update the pointer. Okay. After that, right after that phase, what are readers going to see? Well, all the old readers will be gone. So we'll just have new readers. They'll see the updated values, right, key and value. This is what things look like at this point. Okay? Before we update the pointer, sorry, after we update the pointer, before we wait for readers, is it safe to delete this? No, it's not safe to delete this. We need to wait until we know, reader, know readers are reading that. And that's what we get at phase six. Right? So at phase six, we can now go ahead and free the old node. So that will look like freeing this. And again, we see 17 and 13. And from then on, everyone's going to see all new readers will see this new value. All right. So that's kind of the idea of read, copy, update. The idea is arrange things so that readers always have an atomic update so they see either an old or a new state of the data structure, such that there aren't multiple updates that need to be made in order to make a consistent view of the data structure. This may remind you of something like ZFS, right? In ZFS, we have a whole tree that we can update uh, atomically by basically copying nodes in the tree, making changes to those nodes, percolating those up to the root, and then just doing a single atomic swap of what the root is. So we can see that working with trees could also work in this read, copy, update mode. And the real thing that we're looking for is we want readers to be fast. We want readers to be fast for several reasons. One, we're doing lots and lots and lots of reading. Okay. We, we don't want locks because they slow things down. And even just the overhead of a lock, if we, if we look at four bytes for a lock, we might have hundreds of thousands of, let's say, directory entries in Linux, all of which may have concurrent readers, and we don't want to have to create locks for all of, of those, it's even just the space. So what is RCU? RCU, is, it's, a, it's a philosophy for updating data structures. And the idea is we have readers, and then we also have updaters. And the updaters make copies. And so what they're doing is they are maintaining old and new data structures until the old ones no longer needed. 
do they make a copy of the entire data structure? One hopes not. So one hopes that there are ways in which you can share commonality between the old and new data structure. We saw that example when we looked at the linked list. That's also the case, for instance, for a, a tree where we can share many subtrees uh, between the old and the new version of the tree.